Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today, we're taking a look at the fifth edition of what I like to call Fat Shaming Fridays, where we take a look at various responses to this. Tell me the wildest way you have ever been fat shamed. Not all of these stories are funny. Some of them are just messed up and sad. Like I've said before, if I laugh at any of these, I'm not laughing at the fact that somebody's getting bullied or fat shamed. I'm just laughing at the ridiculousness of the situation. One time when I was a kid, I was walking home from the bus stop and these dudes drove by and yelled out something crazy at me and threw some water balloons. At the time, I was scared because this is Southern California and you never know what's going to happen, but uh, today I can laugh at it. Hopefully, one day all of these people will be able to laugh at the ridiculous fools who made fun of them because I am not on the side of the person that's making fun of people. Even though I would like to help people lose weight, uh, there's nothing cool, nothing right about bullying people for anything, let alone their weight. By the way, somebody made an excellent compilation of the cynical dude taken out of context. I'll leave a link to their video in a pinned comment below. In order to feel some dignity and bounce the shame off of me, I must first apply comb to mustache. So when I was looking for my wedding dress, I ended up going to David's Bridal with my best friend, uh, who was my maid of honor, and um, they had given me a little pin that said bride um, to wear during this like whole event, um, more like an ordeal. <laughs> So, um, they told us, hey, the consultant will be with you in just a moment. Okay, so here's a pro tip. If you go out with a group of women, make sure you're wearing a little pin that says bride, and then people will treat you like you're special. You all go out to eat, and the restaurant staff is like, I was going to spit in her food, but she was wearing a pin that said bride, so I spit in her food twice as much. <laughs> this reminds me of me. Always the bridesmaid. Never the bride. <laughs> um, so just hang out and you know take a look at some dresses. So we're chatting, looking at some dresses. The consultant walks up to us and she starts looking at my friend and asking, um, you know, when's the big day? Um, Did she not see your super special pin that you were wearing? You know, tell me about the man, so-and-so. Are you so excited? All right, I guess not. I guess she did not see the pin. And my friend quickly corrects her like, hey, just to let you know, like she's the bride. I'm not the bride, I'm the maid of honor. Your friend should have just pointed to the pin on your chest. Like, hey lady, hey goober, right here, look. And the woman gives me like a once over, kind of like looks me up and down. It was like, <laughs> really? Really, she looked you up and down like, took in your whole essence, right? <laughs> I know that they're always saying this in stories, and it does happen sometimes, but how often does it really happen where somebody just stops and just looks you down and up? They always say up and down, but I would say down and up, right? You go down first, and then you go up. You don't go up. or I, I don't know. That's a long process, dude. It takes a while to get to somebody's toes. And then back up. Well, you're the bride? Ho, oh. ho. Not with toes like that. I was looking at your toes. Those don't look like bridal toes to me. And I was so hurt. Um, if this really happened, that's pretty messed up. Um, I was really hurt. It killed the whole mood of, um, of you know, what was supposed to be a really joyous day. Um, well, you can't be allowing people to ruin your mood like that. I know it's really easy to get your feelings hurt when people say stuff, and it's impossible not to, but you can't let them bring you down like that, man. She's counting on this ruining your day, and she's getting some sort of sick joy from it. They did end up switching consultants, and the one that we had um, ended up trying to do as much damage control as possible. She was great, but it had really affected how I felt about my whole wedding. What? Dude, stop. Don't let this person ruin your whole entire wedding. Dude, don't let this person ruin your whole day. To heck with that person. You should have just went to a different store immediately. As soon as she looked you up and down, I was like, ah. Oh. You should have just been like, all right, lady. How about I take my money elsewhere, okay? Um, and I never really recovered from it. I never really felt beautiful. I... Okay, well now it's your own fault, okay? At first it was her fault for being a jerk to you, but the fact that you keep holding on to it and letting it negatively affect you till this day, uh, now it's becoming your own fault. Just found a dress and was like, I just want to get this done with. Um... 
And then you're like, and my marriage fell apart after that. I could never look at myself in the mirror. And my husband was, was like, honey, you got to let it go. We're five years into the marriage and you're still talking about that wedding planner chick who looked at you sideways. But she looked me up and down. Many months down the line, I had realized that I had forgotten my veil and went to another bridal shop. My husband... Dude, I swear, if they look you up and down and say you're too large for the veil, I'm gonna lose it. It's been, well, my now husband, uh, fiance at the time, decided, you know what, I'm gonna go with you so that this kind of situation doesn't happen. And then they fat shamed him and you. Oh my gosh, this story's getting crazier by the moment. I just wanna be there, you know, be there to support you. And I said, okay, that's fine. Just to let you know, like, this might happen. Like, something like this may happen again. We go to this bridal shop and we walk in and the woman there, like there's a group of women who are working there, consultants there, and they kind of glance at me and they're like, oh yeah, by the way, like we don't carry uh, plus size bridesmaid dresses. Like you'll have better luck at David's bridal. Bruh, what is up with these wedding places, dude? What the heck? At this point, you should have been like, oh yeah, I want to try on that one. And you point to the smallest dress and then you go and force it on. And you go, bruh, and just break out of it. <laughs> Like the Incredible Hulk, dude. <laughs> and you're like, that one was too big. Give me smaller. And like, but ma'am, but ma'am, that was the smallest dress we had and you broke it. And you're like, give me something smaller. <sighs> and then you start tearing up the joint. Do I have to tell you how to do everything? Everybody knows that's what you're supposed to do. I feel like I'm being like Nick Akato right now. Peasants! Peasants! I was holding hands with my then fiance, now husband, and I was devastated. Again? Dude, stop letting people devastate you. <laughs> Hopefully at some point, it starts bouncing off of you. When people have said the same stupid crap to you enough times, uh, hopefully at some point, you become immune to it. All over again. Um, I ended up not getting a veil from there. Found and then your husband was like, I don't know if we should go through with this wedding at that point. Your entire life went downhill from that point forward and you held this vendetta against these people in these wedding dress places. I don't even know what they're called. Another bridal shop that was absolutely fantastic out of this world. They were so kind and I wish that I had gotten my dress there. I th yeah, you should have. If people straight up are jerks to you, dude, why would you give them your money? You should just walk out immediately. Just laugh in their face and walk out. I think it would have made me feel a lot better about the actual occasion. Um, and then to top it all off, somebody decided to make a comment about my weight on my actual wedding day. So um, yeah, they, they mentioned that I should have lost a couple pounds before my wedding and it really, really hurts to this day. Okay, well, none of that is hilarious at all. My commentary was amazing, but none of the stories themselves uh, were hilarious. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but uh, toot toot. Sorry, I'll stop believing in myself. Next. Tell me the wildest way you have ever been fat shamed. I'll go first. So I used to be 130 pounds heavier. And at lunch, not only would the students like narrate what I was doing as if I were like some animal on Animal Planet. If that happened, that's really messed up. It probably looks something like this. And here you can see the wild aquatic wildebeest in its natural habitat reaching for another bag of Cheetos. And then you're just like this, reaching for the Cheetos. Oh, my pride. Sorry, sorry, none of this is funny. None of this is funny. Like she's going to pick up the chicken and... So they did do it like that. Although you're not doing it right. You have to have like a British accent and be like, here we can see the wildebeest in its natural habitat. It's voraciously hungry. They would literally treat me like an animal but walking on the way back from lunch. Okay, I wanna go on record and say that that is really messed up. They s would run circles around me, and I asked them, like, what are you doing? And they're like, your force of gravity is so strong because you're so big. Ah, oh, dude, that's messed up, but they put that much effort into it. They're like running around in circles around you. You shouldn't have said anything to them because what they wanted you to do was ask them what they were doing so that they could insult you. You should have said nothing, so they just keep running around you in circles forever until they get tired. You pretend like you don't even see it, so they'll just keep doing it. Of course, they'd also throw food at me, expecting me to eat it like I was some animal at a zoo. Okay, man, this is really messed up. This story is making me very sad. What the hell? Hopefully something hilarious happens. I ended up um, eating lunch alone for my 11th and 12th grade year, hidden 
in the art department and the theater department. Be okay, this story is really sad. I'm sorry that that happened to you. Because of how terrible that was. All right, that was terrible. That was terrible indeed. They treated you like an animal, threw food at you, uh, were just harassing you like crazy the entire time. Yeah, that's, that's messed up. Don't bully people, people. I hope that one was made up, but I feel like it wasn't, so uh, I'm really sorry that happened to you. That's screwed. Next. Tell me the wildest way you have ever been fat shamed. The wildest way I've ever been fat shamed happened to me a few years ago. I live six blocks from a grocery store. It was an absolutely beautiful summer day here in the desert of Washington State. So I decided rather than drive, I'm just going to walk. So I throw my wallet and my keys and a bottle of water in a small backpack and I take off. I get about two blocks from my house when this truck full of males pulls up next to me. Uh-oh. I don't like where this is going. Dude, what sort of ungodly horrific thing is about to happen right now? After that last story, I don't know if any of these are even going to be funny. The guy in the back passenger seat leans out the window and yells, Looks like the farmer left the barn door open again. We got a heifer on the loose. Ah, jeez, he's all creative with the insult, too? <laughs> oh, no. It stings a lot more when it's something witty, doesn't it? I'm randomly reminded of this one story where I was working with this chick named Angela. She had started to say, yeah, I don't know how to... And then I interrupted her, and I was like, what else is new? Huh? <laughs> ah, come on, come on. I kid. I kid because I love. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Bruh. Yeah, that's rough. That's rough. What is wrong with these people? I don't want to deal with this bullshit today. So I just ignored him and kept walking. Then the guy leans out the front passenger seat and says, Yeah, I would have said horse, but I'd ride a horse and I won't ride that fat cow. Dude, how slowly were they driving past you? It sounds like they stopped the vehicle next to you to say all of these things because the first thing they said was pretty long and then the second thing was even longer. So I'm starting to kind of doubt the veracity of these statements. And I'm like, oh my God, really? Dude, this is messed up. If this happened, I'm sorry. So I start laughing because I refuse to let them get to me. The guy in the front passenger seat leans out his window again and he yells, what the f*** are you laughing at? Oh, dude, what the heck? They're getting all aggressive with you now when you tried to blow it off and laugh at it? Oh, these guys are truly jerks. And I stop and I turn and I look at him and I said, you. He's, why the f*** you laughing at me? I said, well, you look like men. You sound like men. You're driving a big man's truck. But I'm guessing your age is probably the same as your dick size. And I'm going to guess that's a two, three, definitely a two. So when y'all grow up, which might let that grow out a little bit, then y'all come talk to me when you have some damn banners. You got some damn banners. Well... You know, a lot of people don't have any banners, and that's the problem with society today. Y'all should be having plenty of banners by this point, you know, like, go team, you hold up the banner, it says that. Um, but no, um, I'm starting to think that this story didn't happen based on the fact that it took them that long to drive past you and your retort as well. You, you had this whole little retort to go there, and it, I don't know, it wasn't that good, honestly. <laughs> and I turned around and I just kept walking. So they're yelling out the window. I'm not listening to what they say. I what? What do you mean they're yelling out the window? Are they following you and driving as slowly as a person walks? They're creeping down the road next to you at three miles an hour like they're trying to abduct you or something? Dude, get out of there. Something crazy is going to happen. I put my earbuds in. I crank up the music. I ignore them and I proceed to finish my walk. Dude, when you're getting into a situation, the last thing you want to do is put your earbuds on and turn your back on the danger, dude. I don't need to deal with that kind of bullshit. I'm in my damn 40s. I'm done with petty bullshit based on my size. Yes, I'm a big woman. I don't care. My husband's not big. He loves me just the way I am. And it is what it is. So, sorry, not sorry. Okay, that situation sounded like it was dangerous. When a truck full of dudes pulls up next to you and just starts creeping along as you're walking, ugh, I don't like the feeling of that. I don't like the vibe of that at all, dude. Something stupid could happen where they try to abduct you or something crazy. What you should have done is just insult them all, and then you just start running. Just run, baby. Run. But don't run down the center of the street where they can just mow you down, okay? Run to the side. 
You know how like in cartoons or shows or whatever, there'll be a boulder rolling after somebody and they just stay in front of it and keep running. Oh, I'm going to try to outrun this thing when they should have just stepped to the side and let it roll on by. <laughs> Why does that always happen in movies? Next. Tell me the wildest way you have ever been fat shamed. I'll go first. Okay, just for a bit of background, this was just a couple days after my 19th birthday last year. Okay, we're in what looks like an unfinished garage, a couple days before your 19th birthday last year. Alright man, calm down. Uh, looks like you're starting to have an out-of-body experience. This is nothing to go leaving our bodies over, alright? And this is my old boss, slash my best friend's mum. Okay, your best friend's mum who used to be your boss. Oh, that makes it a lot more difficult, doesn't it? Because you can't just tell them to screw off. But this is about, so, yeah. Oh, okay, you're gonna reenact it for us. All right, I like it. Oh, hello, you all right? What are you doing here? How are you? Oh, hello, my dear. Happy birthday. I know I missed it a couple days ago, but I bought you a little- oh, my God, thank you so much. Oh, you shouldn't have. This is so nice. Thank you so much. Oh, it's nothing special, just a little something I picked up in town today. Oh, still, this is lovely. I can't wait to open it up and see what it is. You're not doing a very good voice for the mom. You gotta do a different voice. Yes, of course. But just so you know, I wasn't sure what size to get you, so um, oh, yeah. I sort of thought, well, I'm a size 16 and obviously you're larger than I. So I got you a size 80. And <laughs> you're just like, what? <laughs> I didn't know they made sizes that big. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'll get you a size 20 because obviously I've got a bigger bum and you've got a bigger belly. She said it like that. Wow, this is a real snooty chick. Is she from one of those posh areas that's all rich? She's got that posh accent, darling. Yes, croquet is a wonderful game you've never played before. No, I haven't played it before. I work for a living. <laughs> No, I've never played croquet. Oh, so yeah. I'm hoping the 20 will fit just fine. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes uh, a lot of sense. Is, is that how you responded? If you feel insulted by somebody, don't play it off like they didn't just insult you to your face. Dude, if somebody comes directly at you and insults you, even if it's in a semi-passive aggressive way, which I don't really think that that was, I think that was just straight aggressive. There was no passiveness to it. When somebody does that, um, you're fully legally within your right uh, to insult them right back to their face. And if they're being passive aggressive, then just be direct so they see that you see right through their shenanigans. Yes, darling, I got you one full size as big as will this do? And you're like, what? What are you trying to say? What the hell is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Catch these hands, Grandma. You're not my boss anymore. I can do whatever I want now. Yes, it's lovely. It's a lovely day, isn't it? Yeah, I think 20's good. Oh, good. You look about a 20. Yeah. <laughs> I think this will fit. Oh, I'm so glad. Thanks so much. Dude, don't do that. Thanks so much and smile like angrily or whatever. Screw that. Confront people. Really, really appreciated it. Basically, long story short, my feelings were a bit hurt, but it made for a funny story, so it's okay. The trousers didn't freaking fit. It... They didn't fit because they were too tight or too large. So let's see if she was right or not before we go getting angry. What if she was correct? Or what if they're not even big enough? The end, um, because Marks and Spencer's sizing is a bit down and I'm six foot tall, so they were about halfway up my leg. Their sizing is a bit down. Okay, so they weren't big enough. Okay, so you weren't a size 20. You were larger than that and those didn't even fit you. So you can't even get mad at the lady. Did you want her to get you a size 16, the same size as you are, and then it's too small? Unless I'm misconstruing what I'm hearing here. I'm pretty sure she's saying that uh, the trousers were still not big enough. So how can you be angry at the lady, huh? She could have been like, yeah, I'm a size 16 and you're a little larger than that, so here's a size 40. <laughs> Do they make such a size? Anyway, it was a lovely gift exchange. She ended up leaving me the receipt in the bag, so I went to Marks and Spencer's and I got a 30 pound food gift card and I had a luxury dinner. So thanks, Linda. Made my belly even bigger that night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you showed her you went and spent that on food. I don't know if I would call a $30 dinner a luxury dinner though, I mean. 
But either way, to heck with that lady, and to heck with all the fat shamers in all of these stories. None of you need to put up with that. You shouldn't internalize the fat phobia that other people have towards you and start feeling bad about yourself. You need to externalize that fat phobia and go start dunking on people that are even bigger than you. Someone makes fun of you because you're 300 pounds? Go start making fun of people that are 400 pounds. That's the only way to heal. To heal. Just kidding. Don't go making fun of anybody. And I'm only laughing at the ridiculousness of the situations in these to teach you how to laugh at the ridiculous stuff that happens to you so that it won't harm you. You just bounce it off your chest, laugh about it. What else can you do, man? If I wasn't laughing right now, I'd be crying. If you enjoyed these fat shaming stories, be sure to leave a like on the video. It really helps. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.